with your was a Friday edition of your view here at Channel 405. And of course, uh, Robert Marawa in the house together with uh, Dr. Ngoba Chavez. I hope I got your surname right there. We're going to be talking about many matters. In the first half of the show, we're we'll talking about the whole issue of cardiovascular, is it cardiovascular diseases. Simplify heart attacks, right? What do you look out for? What the stories are? Very, very big issue. We have lost some, some big personalities in this country uh, due to this. We've lost uh, Chester Williams, we've lost David Kekan, we've lost many other others who don't get reported. And we thought, uh, what an interesting uh, issue to focus on and talk to. So Robert Marawa here with uh, Dr. Ngaba. They're going to both talk to me in the first half hour. And in the last half hour, of course, uh, Robert, full of controversy, as always. So of course, we must talk to him. I mean, he may not be back here in, an, in a year. So we'll <laughs> maximize everything. You stay tuned. One hour of Frank Talk coming up after the news headlines with Kamen Ready. Over to you, Kamen. Thanks, JJ. Guilty of misconduct, the Judicial Service Commission has ordered retired judge in Matata to pay a fine of over 1 million rand for lacking integrity and being racist at the scene of a 2007 crash. Malicious and unsubstantiated, Provin Gordon hits back at rated second Jalo head Iqbal Survey's utterances against him. The looting of South Africa's coffers pushes the U.S. Treasury to sanction the Guptas. American officials say they've monitored their patterns for months. And on World Homelessness Day, the city of Cape Town remains undeterred on finding those sleeping on pavements, this despite the ongoing legal battle on the matter. For well, those are headlines, of course, it's time now for Frank Talk. JJ sits down chatting cardiovascular health. Stay with us. Being in this facility, I think everybody knows of my two heart attacks that I've had, and I've had to be admitted. I've had to have that checked on a regular basis, and the same thing happened last week. I literally drove myself from home after not feeling well, and I said, "Let me go and admit myself because something there's a pain that is not making any sense." And within a couple of hours, I was in ICU. And that's where I've been for the past six or seven days. I'm in the recovery ward now, um, having had the most oh, unbelievable couple of days. When I say unbelievable, I say it because it is on the brink of life and not living. That's what it is. I mean, nice to use no playground. All right, welcome. Our Frank Top tonight, we're talking uh, heart diseases and, and related matters. And at the bottom of the hour, we let the doctor go and talk about other matters of interest. Gentlemen, welcome to Newsroom Africa. Thanks for the invitation, JJ. Good to be here. Wonderful. Doctor, welcome. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. Yeah, you're, call, you're, not, you're not charging consultation fee for this one. We call it here. Robert, thank you for, for, for actually, I must say, initiating that discussion. Yeah. And I was innocently texting you to say, hey, how are you? When are you coming? Yes. So, or, you know, and then you said, no, I'm in ICU. I said, what? I couldn't believe it, uh, Robert. We, 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 you gave us a fright, man. Tell me about that experience. Just give us a sense of, you know, what... what you know, what happens when a heart attack is on the horizon? Well, firstly, I mean, you've got to be thankful for the opportunity for us to come and relay the stories like this. The people take it for granted what a heart attack is, what it should be, what it ought to be. Mm. Because my first experience in 2008, I was confused. I had no idea what it was. All I know is I was trying to change my lifestyle. I was trying to get back to gym, and I was mm. in the gym environment when I was suddenly hit with the pain. Mm. I was sweating, cold sweat, feverishly for a very long time. Got in the car, mm. switched on the air con, <clears throat> and the guys in the parking lot say, hey, Uncle, you know, reverse, reverse. But I didn't have the energy. Sure. 
So I just put on the aircon, recline my seat, and try to get my energy back because I don't know what was going on. Mm. But then eventually I left, long story short, got to the apartment, was feeling hot and bothered. You know, you remove your clothes, you're from gym. But this feeling of just sweating, getting irritable, kept coming and coming and coming until in the end, I was in the back of an ambulance. Sure. Heading off to the hospital where they told me I was having a heart attack. Mm. So you can imagine, I haven't told any family members anything straight into theater. And um, yeah, they begin operating. I think Doc will give us more of the detail. Yeah, because it's a time factor. Mm. I think yeah. I was about, what, 23 minutes away from uh. exiting the world is what they told me afterwards. Sure. <laughs> you know, so uh, then the second one in 2017, again, in the boxing well, and... Good for you to go to Mame Lodi Hospital because... Well, that's, that's part of the... <laughs> they've, got, they've, been, they've been at your memorial, man. <laughs> well, that's part of the thing, though, JJ. You, you, might, you might laugh at it now, but yeah. I spent a good 20 minutes where there was a deliberation where they couldn't find my medical aid card in the car. You are joking. So the ambulance is parked. So you the, are there. It's, I'm there, but I can't get to my car because I'm strapped in the ambulance. Yeah. I can't get to my car. To get your card. To get my there. card. So the person I've asked to help me is obviously in a panic, and he's like trying to get things, and he can't find it. And it, the ambulance wasn't going anywhere until they find that thing so that we can either go right or left. And until I had the foresight to then say, no, but my ENT doctor is at this institution, Yeah, you know, call him, he'll give you the medical he'll aid give detail. all the details. And only then, oh, okay, hmm, engine started, we, 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 off to the hospital. But as I say, Doc, I mean, you, you would know, and, and Doc has been, you talk about memorial services, has been at the forefront of making sure that I don't have one as yeah, yet. Yeah, as yet, yeah, no. Have, well, it's been in his hands, Dr. the fact that I'm alive today. Yeah. We are grateful, Robert, absolutely so. You, 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 and, and Kathy was saying it, once he was uh, throwing forward to this show, you are a national treasure and we cannot afford any <laughs> nonsense now. Doctor, what are the things that people should look out for? Because well, this is a layman's explanation or podcaster's explanation yes. of what they were, they were feeling and so on. But if somebody is watching out there and they, they need to be aware, what should they be aware? Let's start at, at the point where they are supposed, supposedly having a heart attack and we'll come to the possible causes of it uh, in the second part of the discussion. Yeah, I think uh, first thanks to you, JJ, and even for Rob for just coming out to agree to do this. I think mm. uh, a lot of people will benefit just from him giving his first-hand experience, his journey, his story. Mm. And uh, what I would say is, you know, importantly, when you have unexplained pain in your chest area, mm. don't just uh, dismiss it and say, it's, it, and say yeah. it's heartburn. Often, most, many of us say it's heartburn, yeah. and, and we can't believe it. And we often don't think that we are susceptible to actually succumb to a heart attack. We often mm. consider ourselves healthy. And I mean, you look at Rob, he's a healthy guy. Absolutely. You know, um, and you look at the guys who, who recently passed on, Chester Williams. Chester, I mean, just I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, you know, Neil Tovey and other guys, they all, these are healthy people. But uh, mm. uh, I think that's one of the greatest deceptors that uh, one can assume that, you know, I'm okay. So you only indicate so, that it's, it's pain so in, the up, in the upper abdomen. That, or, and, yeah. that's, and that's if you're lucky, because some, some individuals or some patients present with atypical pain or no pain. So the elderly, the diabetic patients, they may not even have a pain. You may just feel nauseous, uh, sweating, not feeling well, you know, and you just think, ah, it's indigestion, food poisoning, yeah. sleep it off. Meanwhile, you actually... Uh, having a progressive heart attack that's in play. And sooner or later, um, you know, the sequelae of that, either you lose your life or you complicate with uh, um, heart failure. So I'd say the main risk factor, if you're having chest pain of unexplained origin, mm. you know, you at home, you're watching TV, you're at the mall, you're at work, suddenly this pain which you can't explain, yeah. it's your body warning you, don't, neglo don't ignore it. Yo. You know, and don't just dismiss it and think it's something. So true. that becomes an emergency. So you need to go to an emergency facility to be checked so if, if you believe that that pain is something that could so, be linked to. So it's a unique your heart. pain. So it's yeah. a unique pain. So most pains we get are very specific. They're very uh, what we call uh, um, um, somatic pains where we can localize it. It's very sharp. 
Um, if someone stabs you or pricks you, you can localize exactly where it is. Yeah. This pain is unique. It's very dull. So it's, it's, you can't really localize it to say, you know, with one finger, here it is. You know, it's in a certain region or area. Um, it, it's more of a heavy, crushing nature. So you feel as if you've got a truck sitting on your chest sure. and there's this impending sense that I'm dying. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I'm, I'm just not well. This truck is crushing me. I'm dying. And that's the kind of pain that it is. It usually will radiate to your left arm or to the, or to the neck or sometimes even to your back. Um, and, and you feel this pain and it's, it's a constant pain that is just ignoring at you, you know, yeah. uh, and you just can't explain In, in simple terms, you say you can't explain that, so what is he explain it? What, what is a heart <laughs> you can't explain a heart it, attack? No, are you being attacked? Is, is it okay? Is okay, it that, is it, yeah, what's, okay, yeah. yeah okay. what's the origins of the okay. nomenclature? Heart yeah, attack. Yeah. yeah, so so I think uh, obviously uh, people just call these uh, words heart attack, but I think it, it brings a sense of emergency. You know, my heart is being attacked. Yeah. But in simple terms, what really is happening inside your body is that your heart's blood vessels are acutely occluded, you know. So there was blood flow in that artery. The heart, is, remember, is a muscle. It's constantly working. Yes. So if you think about an athlete who's exercising, the muscles need blood supply. So yeah. the heart is constantly in action. And suddenly, um, you've got three main uh, blood vessels that give blood supply to the heart. We call those coronary arteries. Yeah. So one of them acutely occludes. I and see. instantly, the muscle is not getting oxygen, is not getting nutrients it's not getting its sustenance and it starts complaining. And that's what it is when you feel those symptoms. It's a, an acute emergency that yeah. requires you to do something immediately. Otherwise, you know, that just might be your last day. Absolutely. Doctor, we're gonna talk about, I mean, if you said you referred to Robert as a healthy guy, the other people, the chest are very, I mean, exactly. what, 2000, what, 40? Or 49, yeah. Yeah. ridiculous. 50s, yeah. Yeah. The guy could still go for another 30 years yeah. and yeah. be training yeah. you know, youngsters in rugby and so on, and, and, and they, are, they are gone. So after the break, I want to talk about what are the possible, what is the, what is the checklist to, to make sure that you can try and avoid uh, you know, a, a heart attack in particular. So I want to talk about that. I know that there's no you know, formula to these things, but I'm sure there is a checklist. I'm sure Robert here will tell us, you said, avoid this, avoid that. I wonder what you told him to avoid. But we will talk about that uh, after the break. <laughs> we are uh, around the table tonight talking about heart attacks, right? And uh, the doctor has given you some tips there. We've also put them up on your screen about what you should look out for. Now, after the break, we talk about what you need to be doing to, to make sure that you remain safe. Let's take a break now. Right, welcome back to uh, Frank Talk tonight. Doctor, let's get on to it. I'll come to, to you, Robert, just now. Two or three things that you would advise to say, this is what you need to be doing, right, to, to, to avoid, to avoid. Attack or to lessen, uh, lessen its possibilities. All right. So before I get into that, uh, JJ, just to give you a bit of a, a, a feel, just how big the problem is, mm. because I think a lot of us think this is like a you know, uh, a lightning, you know, Robert Chester and the guys just happened to get struck by lightning. Yeah. They're just unlucky, you know, but this is actually a very, very common disease. Um, what's happening is uh, where I work as a cardiologist, we treat patients who come with heart attacks and there's now an increasing number beyond um, what we see from infectious disease of cardiovascular disease. You know, just to throw some numbers at you, Globally, um, 2014, 2015 stats, we've got about 17 million people worldwide uh, dying, from, million. Yeah, dying from cardiovascular disease. Number one killer globally, you know, ischemic heart disease, that's heart attacks. So in America and Europe, if you don't know what you're gonna die from, you're most likely gonna die from a heart attack. My you know, so, so if you look at um, the middle class and the upper yeah. class in South Africa, if you follow those trends, what it simply means is that this problem is going to exponentially increase in our region. And obviously, South Africa is leading development in sub-Saharan -sub -sub yeah. Africa. And in 2017, 2018, STATS, Stats ASA came out and demonstrated that 
you know, non-communicable diseases have actually overtaken infectious diseases. So you and I are thinking, you know, I don't have HIV, I don't have malaria, I don't have pneumonia, I'm okay, you know, yeah. I'm safe. Uh, it's the people in the lower end of the economic chain who succumb to those diseases. But this is a, a positive spin. This is happening to people whom we're thinking are okay. So it's yeah. our managers, our CEOs, the middle class, you know, the guy who, who has medical aid, who yeah. think ah, I'm actually safe. Mm -hmm. This is what is actually killing them in, in numbers. That's scary. Those and, numbers and, are scary. And, 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 and yeah. it's huge. And the problem is we haven't really geared up ourselves and our health systems to actually deal with the problem. And it's very, very simple. So looking at the risk factors, it all comes down really to lifestyle. These yeah. are diseases of lifestyle. So, and a lot of the, the risk factors are asymptomatic. So you actually feel nothing. Nothing. You, you know, nothing. you're thinking I'm great, you know, but inside your body, things are not okay. So one of the key drivers, hypertension, you know, okay. or high blood pressure. Many people don't even know what high blood pressure is. They don't even check it. And those who do know what it is and have checked it, if they, they know it's high, they're also reluctant to take medication. And we normally uh, talk about hypertension having a 90, 10% rule. So if you look at 90 to 10% 90 90 rule. So if you look at the entire population, you'll find that um, of those that uh, are potentially uh, to have hypertension, only 10% probably get screened, 90% don't. Of that so 10, live with it, but they don't. They know. don't even know. Yeah. Of that 10% who know, you will find that 90% are not controlled. Yeah. It's only the 10% that are actually controlled on treatment. So the the statistics. Which are, mean there's a problem uh, of its management overall. Then it's management, yeah. it's awareness, and the seriousness we take it. And the sad thing is that with these conditions, by the time you get a heart attack, you get a stroke, you get peripheral vascular disease, it's potentially life ending. That's why if you have a life cover or life policy, these are considered dreaded life disease. So yeah. if you have life policy, you have a heart attack, um, you know, Metropolitan Life, Sun Lam, they actually pay you out because you've just survived something that should have taken you out, you know. Sure. And, and that's how serious it is. But obviously the public aren't really aware because th this is painless. And what, the, what do you avoid? What the, do you avoid, the, doctor? The, the, the things you need to avoid really is, you know, the, the bad diet, you know, so all your fast foods, the lack of exercise, the excessive alcohol intake, um, the high salt intake. If you are a smoker, smoking is terrible, you know. Smoking should be banned. All together. All together, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Yeah. Because a lot of risk factors are ischemic heart disease, cancer as well. Um, if you have a family history, that's an increasing risk. If you're male, you know, females catch up with males as soon as they reach uh, menopause, so 40, 40 plus, 45 plus, yeah. females are increased, same risk as men. So it's really all of those things. High cholesterol, hypertension, inactivity, smoking. It's a basket of history. things It's now, a basket of now, things. I want to bring it home now. Robert, what are you going to give up? What, <laughs> you have to share something. You got worried when you spoke about smoking. <laughs> Are you, are you a smoker? No, I'm saying you got worried when he sp yeah, spoke about smoking. Yeah, my grandfather smoke. smoked until 90, and he was smoking 20 Lexington's a day. A day. So I don't so know. You want to challenge him? He started him. at 18, so I'm not sure he's a survivor. So you want to challenge him? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I hate smoking altogether. Actually, there's been a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a deal breaker, even in, in the past yeah. when I was looking for, 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 a, for a wife. You know? Oh. Yeah, because if you kill somebody who's smoking, it's terrible. But, but so should we have, should we have a, I think you deserve your own show, eh? To kiss tell, with tell JJ. Me, tell, me, <laughs> tell me what you are giving up. One or two things that you think. Because you've got to assess your yeah. own basket of activities and say, I think that one may have contributed. Yeah. It's, I think the difficulty Doc spoke about is, is, is it's not cut and dry. You can give up your your Simba chips or whatever, but it's not about that. You know, you, you know in the sporting world when yeah. the Cameroonian Mark Vivian Foe passed away in the height of his career, yeah. one of the best in the world. We know yes. when Fabrice Mwamba went down in the game against Tottenham Hotspur, they had to have a cardiologist come out of, of the crowd to try and assist him. Sure. Um, Doc spoke about Neil Tovey. He, for the second heart attack, was cycling, you know, from Maritzburg to Durban keeping fit. Lucas Khatebe, again, prime athlete, was playing Champions League, had just yeah. come back from Leeds United, 
also had a heart attack while at Virgin Active uh, in Grayston yeah. training. Lucas Hatteb, again. In fact, he had, a, he had a seizure in his first match, you remember, with Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. I'm not sure whether there was a heart attack or what it was. But, it was, it but was it's terrible. underlining, you know, because it was again... Terrible on, 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 the, on the ground. Eh? The late Papi Fati as well was warned at, at, at Budweiswitz that he should stop playing the game. And obviously he was advised by other people that he should carry on. And we sadly lost him as well. Yes. And, you know, it's an, it's an ongoing list of people in their prime who probably would in parade fact, with six packs and, yes. and, 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 and you would not fault them for anything. Yeah. So that is the one thing that you, you cannot say and pinpoint yeah. this and this shouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, yes, I'm, 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 I'm undergoing from a, a dietary perspective, uh, you know, changes in that. Sleep yeah. is an important thing. It's the one thing I did admit to Doc that... You hey, slept a few hours. You know me, if I'm clocking two or three hours a day, I'm doing yeah, well. Yeah, no, that's so terrible. <laughs> that, <laughs> so he's had to crack the whip in terms of yeah. that. So I'm finding quality sleep, but yeah. I, I'm also finding that I'm also eating three meals a day. That was not known to me. Yeah, this skipping of me. meals, because when we are busy, we're tempted to skip meals. Yeah, and then and when you, know, you knock off here... At 12, in your, what, what must I do at 12 midnight? These 24 I'm hungry, hour I've been places. waiting since six. Mm. You know? And then you rush to a quick fix meal because exactly. those people are open until the morning. They have a 24-hour breakfast of chicken and eggs and you buy both of them at the same time oh and that's God. a problem. <laughs> so all I'm saying to you is that you, you've got to clean up yourself. Yeah. So yeah. for me to have those three meals was an unknown factor because I never had three meals. Mm. But now I find when I get to lunch, my system tells me that it is lunchtime. You, have to you must eat. eat. Now. Yeah. You go to work and the system tells you that it's dinner time and you must eat. But it's what you eat as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you find yourself going back to those items that we would skip before. You know, you focus on the bad ones, you leave out the veggies and how they prepared. Because you can't be asking for, you know, people ask for a ridiculous thing. Can I have a, a burger? Then you think you're going to cancel it out with a Diet Coke. <laughs> You know, a and, a diet coke. and a diet coke, and uh, you know those things don't work. So those those are kind of habits that absolute people tell themselves work, but yeah. they don't. Clearly, the education levels, Robert, are very poor no, in they terms are. of what to consume and so on. That's one side. Yeah. The other side is that with the levels of poverty, yeah. people then uh, end up with food that may be consistently unhealthy yeah. because that's all they can afford. Yeah. But there's yeah. an irony there, though, because I think what Doc and the team, because I, I, I find these platforms quite useful because mm -hmm. I can then assist other people to avoid Absolutely. being in my position mm -hmm. again. And there is no pain. Mm -hmm. Listen to me when I say that there is no pain in this world that replaces the pain of you knowing you have a heart attack. You can take your oak guppy that you normally carry JJ in your pocket, take it out. <laughs> you can actually stab me a few times. I'll be okay with that pain. Sure. But the day you feel the pain of a heart attack, you will scream. I've never known myself to scream. I was in the hospital aisle um, <clears throat> when I, the 2017 episode. Yeah. And hearing myself, the voice rebounding down the corridor, I was screaming in pain. You know, I just wanted some form of relief My because goodness. it was that excruciating. It was, you know, hey, your pain is very painful. That's exactly so, it. But, Doctor, the numbers mm. that you've mentioned here, yeah. do they suggest that, in fact, sometimes somebody could just be coming for a normal checkup, they don't even know they're having a heart attack? No. And, 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 or or does, will, they, will it always be preceded by this pain that you, you, you identified as a key symptom? But those numbers look, look ridiculous for, yes. for emergency because people will be queuing at emergencies if so, they, they resp responded to their heart attack indicator, if you like. But that's exactly what's happening. So in, in, in my field of work, you know, uh, weekly, I'm seeing 20 to 30 heart attacks. In weekly. South Africa? Yes. Young, Week, young ones and as well. Young, yeah. And young patients even. As Who young, come just saying as I have a pain here or, or even nothing. So these get referred because we, we, we're, we're a, a cardiac center. Yeah. These patients get referred to us, but th those are the kind of numbers we're seeing. So this is a real problem. The problem is we don't talk about it and also it doesn't hit us. You know, when someone has HIV, you're sick, you're wasted, yeah. you've got cancer, it's graphic. People yeah. in the street, in the taxi, they can say, hey, this one is sick. Yeah. But when you have a heart attack, you know, hey, this man, this man is healthy. What are you talking about? You know, so it, it, it really is Just a Just on that one, and, and, and we've got to ride on that moment, exactly what Doc is saying. Yeah. When, when I got discharged, 
and, uh, and I went to fill up gas at the garage, yeah. right? So I get out the car and I go to the shop. Yeah. And, the, you know, the, 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 the guy who's pouring the petrol uh, is like, how? What you put? We are paid, I'm fine. Hey, go to Sapele, Lenji. Yeah. I'm going to do wrong. You know, like, you, you still complete. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong. Maybe in his mind, he was anticipating what Doc is exactly. talking yeah, about. That, that I'll, I'll come like back and, wasted. you know, the yeah. saggy looking and I'll, and I'll be looking the part of the typical sick person that is no. presented to you. And yet, mm. it, it isn't any of that. Mm. You will look, you'll be fine, everything will be normal. It's just that you have no clue of what is going on. I think this was yeah. extremely so, useful. Yeah. Doctor, your last word before we let you go, what do you say to people at home there who maybe have just joined the conversation? Sum it up for us. You know, so this disease is here, it's big. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the only good thing you can do for yourself, first of all, is get screened. Okay. So if you go to your GP, your local clinic, check your blood pressure, check your cholesterol, um, stop smoking, be honest, take, re take responsibility, you know. If you know if you're living a bad lifestyle, you know if you're not exercising, eating unhealthy things. So the onus is on you because people are dying and in numbers. Numbers. So in numbers. So the numbers you are scared. You know, you, you're not going to be the first one, you won't be the last one. And we anticipate and we expect these numbers to grow exponentially. So what I'd really say to people is get yourself screened, know your numbers, know where you stand. Because when you know where you stand, just like with the HIV campaign, you say people must check, know your status. Absolutely. Same thing with this. Know where you stand. And, Where's your cardiac center? And, and, and don't think that yeah. because you, 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 you are uh, someone who is um, um, slender, athletic, I'm that immune. It's, it's those individuals who, 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 who are at risk and who actually get you. So I work at both Wits University and the Wits okay. Medical School. I'm the academic and clinical head of cardiology there. Wonderful. At the, the cardiac the other hospital? Vet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, I want to ask you a quick question. Yeah. Which hospital do you think I went to? Olive Dale. So, see? Exactly. Yeah, well, it's, it's where I went, at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. None, dear. <laughs> where did you but, go? No, but that's... The, he, holds, he, he heads up an entire division. Yes. At Charlotte Matlaige Hospital. You're joking. And I was just dissing Charlotte Matlaige just this past week. <laughs> People have no idea of the amount of work that yeah. gets done at Charlotte Matlaige. My goodness. There, there, there's a lot of things people would want to criticize about the yeah. hospital, the facility, yeah. without even stepping into that facility. Into yeah. Uh, I, I had a bad experience because it, the, you know, the, 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 the nurses were on strike, or, or you know, the workers were on when strike when I went there. <laughs> We're going to have to go now. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for, for yes, being yes. here. We hope to visit you there, and, 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 and we don't want to do this as a once-off. Sure. Uh, they want to create uh, health discussions uh, on a regular basis. And, 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 and Robert, thank you for helping us launch that, sure. that particular slot to happen on Thursdays from time to time, sure. where we look at different you know, health matters that should really help our society. So, Doctor, thank you. Robert, you staying. We, we're going up to 11 with you. <laughs> Let's take a break. Now. Lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pirates at his home. Yes. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to Frank Talk tonight. And our Frank Talk interview tonight is with Robert Marao. And uh, if you missed that discussion about heart attacks, of course, you can find it on our YouTube channel. Very, very important. We'll also try and tweet, that, tweet it out uh, for you to catch up on. But, Robert, congratulations, man, on Marawa TV. You're truly trailing the blaze. Tell me more about it. Before you, you tell me why you were fired from Supersport or you, you walked away, that we can do that as part B. What do you think? <laughs> Was I fired or did I walk away? Am I you a broadcaster <laughs> or Johnny Walker? What do you think I am? I think they said, don't come back. And then you said, oh, all right, whatever. And then you went to start something else. But you tell me. No, I, you know, JJ, the, the, the funny thing in this world is that when you have a passion, yeah. no matter who or what, they can never take that away Nothing from you. Nothing can stop you. You know, so if that platform wants to deny you a platform, because that's all the people are Another providing, platform will be is a platform. Next door. So if it's not created already, why not create it yourself? Yeah. Then I have to also internalize, why does the man above allow me to 
continue living in, spa in, in the spate of all of these yes. heart attacks and stuff, what's my purpose, actually? Yeah. Is my purpose to drive Marawa, the brand, in a certain direction yes. for himself or is it to help other people? Because the minute we launched Marawa TV, my DMs, whether it was on Twitter or Instagram, were flooded by people saying, you know what, I have a degree or I have a diploma, mm. um, I'm a, vid a videographer, I am someone who's a sound specialist, I am a this, I'm a that, I would love an opportunity, can you give me that? And all of a sudden I thought, okay, well, this is an opportunity. Yeah. That interview at the Orlando Stadium was also given to someone who had just DM'd me and said, listen, I'm, I'm someone who wants to make films, yeah. untested. I also took the risk. Yeah, I didn't pay the guys uh, because we were not working off a, a budget yeah. that can start paying people off. But the idea, the direction is there. You know, when people, politicians, talk about how are we going to resolve or solve the issue of unemployment, mm. and they're always thinking... You've got to be wearing a suit, you've got to be able to get into a business class flight and head off to Davos and speak big English. Mm. And yet, that isn't the case. What about people that have got a craft and a gift in the broadcasting sector? Absolutely. Why do they get overlooked? Why do people that are, are football players that are supposed to be getting help in building academies, why are those people overlooked? Because that's a form of employment. Do you think Absolutely. Neymar wanted to become... Absolutely. Uh, an accountant? No, because he's a better footballer than he is an accountant. So but Marawa he moved TV, him out. Is, it, is the approach more of a podcast TV of some like TV on demand, or or are you envisioning to grow into a fully fledged television station at some point? Do you normally tell your future competition <laughs> <laughs> what you are planning? You can't tell your future competition. Okay, what what's happening planning? now with you? What is happening now is yeah. we're having very good conversations with people that are very yeah. interested in the concept, yeah. um, who have said the basic things, JJ, that data is too expensive. I know that in, yeah. in, in my travels, what I pay here is a ridiculous amount of money across Absolutely. all networks. It's tenfold or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad. So all, all the big guys, whether they Vodacom, MTN, CLC, who are watching the show, they should be having board meetings next week to try and alleviate what I call greed. You yeah. can call it whatever it is, but they'll be watching the show and they know that what they're doing is wrong. Absolutely. And they know that as a third world country, they can't be charging people like that. And we've said that even before moving into the space of um, having to go whether it's a YouTube or online, that message is being resounding all the time. Is yeah. that let's, let's not pickpocket people that have already been pickpocketed before. So how do you mitigate this whole data? So that is why those conversations are happening with the people yeah. that are interested in putting it on certain platforms that will make it easily available. Easily, easily accessible. And accessible because yeah. that's what people want. You don't want to lose a conversation like you've just seen now with a, a Dr. Ivan Koza in yeah. an environment where he's able to speak about his stadium at Orlando. Yeah. And, and the person who really should be watching it is unable to see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So this, this speaks to partnerships. It does speak to partnerships. It speaks a lot as well to people that are well in tune in terms of the here and the now. Where are we yeah. moving to in the next... 10 years. You know, make no mistake, radio will still rule. The radio is switch on in your car. That will still rule for the next 10, 15 years. Uh, terrestrial television will still rule, yes. yes. Uh, obviously, satellite will. So in answering your first question yeah. by answering the second as well, yeah. is me saying that I would never walk away from a passion. Um, so the, the fact that you don't know if I was fired or not is, answers your question because <laughs> The people who would have done that should have released a, a press statement yeah, to say, say, this is why we this let is this what guy go. We've, but, 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 but you, you, but you and I it. know they never tell the truth in that circumstance. No, 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 but it's, it's fine. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people have asked. It's still a legal issue. I see. Yeah, it's still a legal so it's not, issue. It's not closed yet. So you don't want to, 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 to make this a courtroom. Nah, the thing is, I'm, I'm easy to talk about anything that people want to know about, you know. Yeah. So the, the fact that yeah, the I, I, never, is, I the, never resigned. The, the issue is that, that, that there was a national key point. Just like your radio show yeah. is, right? The TV thing was a national key point. They are still crying now. So what do you say to those? Because you have not spoken a lot about it in public. No, but it, how do you sum it up, your relationship there and, and why it had to end? Yeah. I, I haven't spoken about it because maybe it doesn't deserve to be spoken about. You know, the okay. cowards are the people that should have actually sent out 
uh, the notification. You can't be JJ here in newsroom and host then one of the most. Gone. Then the next thing, I mean, you told me you went for your eye operation. Yeah. I didn't even know where you were. We were looking yeah. for you under the tables, but <laughs> I mean, here you were doing what you do because you've become an integral part of this. I, I went there after the World Cup in Germany. So it's over 12 years of service there. You're supposed to be hosting the UEFA Champions League yeah. on the 1st of June, the next thing you being whipped. So why don't you become brave enough to tell the people who've subscribed uh, to watch and to tune in Absolutely. what is it that has happened? Because you've, you've you know, um, have you swept the other issues under the carpet? Mm. Did I, were people's nerves touched when I mentioned things about sexual harassment? You know, sure. was, was, was that a problem? Or were other things an issue? Then it starts a debate. Then it becomes my problem. It's then people say, no, but it wasn't about the issue around sexual harassment. Yeah. Yeah. But There's always an alternative fact where, where firing is concerned. It, it, How are you handling yeah. that yeah. becomes the big issue. Yeah. You know, but I, 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 I'm always eternally grateful for the people that lend their support to the work that we do. Yeah. And it's a difficult job. And part of my bad habits um, that I incurred that probably ended up with me having heart attacks were well, because of how intrinsically inclined to do my work I was. Yeah. I would finish work, you know, do radio, rush off to do a, a highlight show at half past nine, get home at 10, start my UEFA Champions League prep, <laughs> do my room dividers prep, go sleep when I hear the birds chirping outside, it's almost five o'clock. Sure. It was Tuesday, I've got to do a rugby show. I haven't watched a single rugby game because I was doing a game in Toyando, I was doing a I, game in Durban. Hectic, so now I must catch up by watching these games and, and going through match reports so that I am adequately prepared, prepared to then go and do a Save show. Your people, yeah. You know, so then I would do that. I would greet the guys who are doing Champions League who've been flown all the way from the UK. I would greet them as the first half starts and be like, hey, how, John Buns, how are you? You know, because I haven't had the time to greet them. I get there and immediately we go in there. I never missed one show. I never had one disciplinary. I had nothing My of that goodness. sort. So yeah, how do you move from that? Yeah to cheers. So that is the only thing that people need to interrogate, investigate. Yeah. I've heard what they've said. Yeah. Others have spoken in other platforms where they're dealing and addressing their shareholders. You know, the, the ability for me to say that the shirt that JJ is wearing today is a beautiful yellow shirt. When it's and white then, and it's staring it's white, in your face. <laughs> but I'm saying to myself, guys, you have not seen the yellow shirt that JJ is wearing today. And everyone switches on and say, no, that's an old show. He's wearing white. Where's the yellow? Yeah. You're never going to find that yellow because you keep lying to yourself. Why are you lying? Who are the external forces and people that force that decision to happen to say, that one, yeah. get rid of him? You're flagging a big issue, Robert. Yeah. The issue of, for lack of a better way, the underdog in our industry. Mm. And the issue of poor recognition of team effort to, to make things happen. And, it, it, and, and I, I think it's a recurring thing. The, the issue you are raising now yeah. is not dissimilar from what happened to you at Metro at some yes. point, where your producer was, was you, you had to actually stand up for your producer. For yeah. Who, who you don't even know who it is. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, you know? the, the thing is that anybody, JJ, that knows how I work, I would take the bullet for you because I, I knew what that whole fight was all about. They, they were trying to get at me, mm. not at her. And they knew that I would stand up for her. Yes. So that it makes it easier for them. As a result, they were able to, you get, to get you out. So that is why the person who was responsible for all of this was so excited. She went and posted the fact that I've fired on her Facebook page. That is, they probably had a spit bride the whole weekend. <laughs> that is how happy they were. You know, that, that's part of the thing, unfortunately, with, um, with a lot of black people that are put into positions where they have to make a call on you. Do you think Fresh is a bad DJ? Of course not. But do you think firing fresh is a wonderful thing? Of course, if you're in the position of power, people, where are you going to go tell somebody that absolutely. I'm the one that fired this it's one? It's a bad thing where we don't support each other. And I want to talk about how we can fix our industry, Robert, because these things are, you know, today it's happening to you, tomorrow it will be me, tomorrow it will be somebody else. Sure. You know, I mean, this week alone, we, 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 in fact, even the next conversation is with artists who are saying we're being exploited mm. and what have you. And I want to hear some of your views 
about how we're going to fix this because it looks like it's now slogans all the time. It's not like it's a new conversation. We don't That's fix, right? though, hey? It, uh, it, we, we don't fix in this country. I don't. mean, you, you sit here and you analyze a very wonderful thing called the Zondo Commission. But to a normal person who is proper thug, he's like, how? Man, she sings over Laleli, Kebem, Kuluma, but Mababa Kogama suit. We're dignifying wrongdoing because it's wearing a suit, but Terrible. nothing happens. So you, you're going to say tomorrow, okay, I'm, I can go steal that cell phone. I can go blow up that ATM. I can do that cash in transit. Why? Because there's the, no end the result. Culture. So the, now Americans are coming in and saying, we can actually deal with the people that Absolutely. you're failing to Just deal with. Just hold that thought. Hold that thought because exactly, that was exactly my sentiment that the Americans seem to have moved ahead of us. When we are here and we see and we know the stuff that's happening and we are dilly darling. Anyway, let's take a break. With Robert Marawa, our last segment, we round off to just find out his views about how to fix some of the things that are going wrong, especially in this industry. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Frank Talk uh, with Robert Marawa tonight. Uh, visiting us for the first time, I suppose, Robert. For the first time, I know. Uh, and Africa, you asked me for the address. I said, Oh my god, I mean, it's been six months. Uh, you, you've it's, got, it's, you've it's got, a chap called you've, Mark Lewis. You've got mugs, yeah. yeah. They, they, actually, the mugs are new, actually, uh, Robert. I, I saw just... uh, a microphone where <laughs> you scream and shout at everybody. <laughs> I walked in yesterday, I just landed and switched on my TV. Yo! <laughs> I'm like, I'm also from Kandra. Is he also going to shout at me, this guy? <laughs> well, fun. The shouting is for the crooks. I always tell people, when you sit there, you're all right. But look, man, this week just happened to be putting on the agenda yeah. the issue of the exploitation in the industry. It's actually very bad. And the problem is it doesn't look like we are anywhere near fixing it. I mean, I had a, a, a couple, last, year, last year there was a, this whole copyright issue and the artists were up in arms, but it's cyclical. So when a new minister comes, they meet him and there's a big song and dance and then nothing yeah, happens. Yeah. What are the, how do you analyze the issues in the industry? Just one or two big ones that we think. If we eat this elephant, even in, if it's in small chunks, these are the two things we need to deal with uh, to, to try and change the lot of, of particularly the artistic profession, the TV and radio industries? You know, JJ, the, the, I think there's also a lack of disrespect. Like you would have grown up watching the news. You would know a person by the name of Umam, no, oh, right? Linguistically strong. And, you know, I, I don't know who took a decision, you know, so, I know people like to take things personally, but it's obviously no fault of any of the people that are in charge now. But why, on God's green earth, would Mam Nongkolo Krodpoem not be on our screens, given her knowledge, the impact? The and, connection. And the connection with the audience. With the audience. So the, then you want to revive her when there's top funerals of politicians that have passed away, then all of a sudden you remember that her worth. Exists. You know, for me, that is so. I, I grew up as a kid watching Abo Anna Botting on Sky. Mm. Um, you, you watch CNN, Wolf Blitzer still in the Situation Room. Mm. Uh, you're watching so many different people. Um, Christiana Mampour yeah. left, she came back, she still has a show. Anderson Cooper still has a show. Are those young people? No. no, no. I mean, this is not like a, a gig for MTV where you're looking at uh, JJ with the six pack and it's all about wonderful the bodies looks and so on. for oh, news wisdom and knowledge for and news history. and for sport especially within the industry that i can speak about the older you are the better credibility you actually have and the greater the audience you're able to hold because now you're crossing over to the commons and they're having a whole brexit debate yeah now you're going to get somebody who's still going to have to quickly check their notes. What, what and, is Brexit? And what is Brexit? <laughs> Whereas you cross to an established person who's yeah. able to break it down for you Absolutely. as clear as daylight, understand. makes you understand decisions that were taken and before. Fact, if you think about it, so Robert, on. that's part of oral tradition, yeah. but in a digital era. 100%. To say what, what we're taking the, the history down to our next generations yeah. in a systematic, continuous, and consistent way. Now, 
the lack of respect is what I highlighted first. And I gave you an example of a person who's still living with us, who is still very able to communicate and see and talk in her. Vati Swandakha, I know her very well. Mm. And she's always been a very outspoken person yeah. because she's also had a tough. She was a news reader on Metro FM. Yeah. And then she obviously pursued her career as a renowned actress, an award-winning actress. Yeah. The Fergusons and Connie and Shauna I also know personally. Yeah. And they've started a business which has also taken care of a lot of people. And I know also Connie's struggles when she was still with SABC yeah. and just joining the other soapies and the fact that they would show, let's say, generations locally, but then export it to other countries and, not and the artists not that. be able to be yeah. paid. You yeah. know, so but is she following in those footsteps? The That's revolutionary, the <laughs> but that is why you need that debate. You yeah. know, you need them to be sitting here. You yeah. need the other side if to be sitting here. Invited them, by the way, yes. And and there's absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah. You know, there's um, there's a lot of the, the the people that are in this debate who are very good friends of mine, and I understand the the, the plight that they have. Mm. They're very similar, and when people talk about, oh, uh, DJ Spanban is earning so much money. Yeah. Okay, let's say that person is earning 7,000 rand an hour, right? Yeah. So from that 7,000 rand, you're gonna get taxed. You're the tax man yeah. sitting here. Yeah. So he <laughs> takes yeah. his money. Takes almost half. 45% yeah. of that 7,000 gone to yeah. tax man, right? Because you're an independent contractor. Yeah. And then now do you have a, a medical aid? So you need to service that. You've got a car, you need to pay for the car. Have you got a home? You need to pay for the home. Uh, you've got a kid, you need to pay for the school fees. School fees. So times, 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 how... He's finished. How, where's that seven grand? But He's they will be quite keen to portray you as this DJ that's earning 7,000 rand. Yeah. Like anywhere in society, there are people that are going to be reckless with their money. Yeah. There are going to be people that are going to be able to handle their money well and save and, and, invest, save and, and so invest and talk about but what to do. But there's a tendency to think that artists should be the poorest cousins of, if you like, career progression why? in the different parts. I don't understand do the, do the people, do they, uh, do they follow Abombong in Ingema when they were doing something called protest theatre, when they were doing Asna Mali, when they were down in the market theatre, doing the kind of theatre that gave rise to the artists now that are more keen to showcase their Louis Vuitton bags, pose with them, <laughs> and make it look like that's a fashionable thing. And then they want to cry we'll poverty. Right. We're going to so, go to, yeah, we, we'll need two hours with you. But unfortunately, we are running fast out of time. Come in, what's happening on, on Twitter there? Well, plenty of questions for Rob this uh, evening, rather. Uh, Kamero here saying, if he was SAFA CEO, what major changes would he implement immediately? Okay. Second question there, what do you think is the real reason the PSL is having an acting CEO for the past seven years? Sure. <laughs> Hitman here saying, with his influence and power, in hindsight, do you regret being the main orchestrator of anti Sheikh's Mashaba media narrative that led to his dismissal and further dwindling of our national team? And what does he think about the current situation in our national team? Hmm. Smangaliso here saying, will Marawa TV be giving opportunities to young and upcoming sportscasters, perhaps in the near future? I'm sure many people are wanting to know the answer to that question. And then Another tweet coming and saying, I'm asking about um, Olani Gwala, um, about an update on how he's doing there. Of course, some um, oh ill a colleague there. So, JJ, it's yeah. back to you. Thanks so much, Carmen. Thank you for those. Uh, uh, quick, let's deal with them quickly. Quickly, the, the, Safa, if, Safa, the state of our football, uh, uh, Robert, always a concern. Yeah. What would you do quickly? One or two things you would do to fix it if you're a Safa CEO? Yeah, Which I, I think is somewhere where you may, where you may end up. At this no, I've, re <laughs> I've rejected CEO positions before. I'm, I'm a broadcaster. I'm not going to take the jobs <laughs> that they're going to set you up for failure and then yeah. put you out in the street. So, no, no, no. Um, there's a lot wrong in football, man. Um, sure. it, it can't be a soundbite, and I'm not going to give a soundbite. Yeah. What I'm saying is there's a lot wrong in football. You think about it. How many coaches have we had? Oh, my God. Since readmission. The only comparison there will be the SABC. I think they, they have neck to neck. I think 11, 11 over 11 years? Yeah. It's or, bad. Or Chipper United, one of the two. You, you decide. But all I'm saying is that football's in a... Yeah, they might say we've gone to the World Cup for women, under 20s, but what are we bringing back? Why do we still refer back to 1996 yeah. as that moment of glory? Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful that a team like Sundowns has come through and dominated within the continent. It's yeah. beautiful to watch because we're always talking about Pirates in 95. Uh, having won the, the Champions League. 
about the CEO staying for that long, I, I don't know. Um, I think the, the same people that probably don't want to see this face are probably the people that they're asking me about. So they can, they can deal with their problems. There are things, unfortunately, within football where people have made it their family business. And yeah. uh, we all wish them well. All we know is that when you watch football, the crowds are not there. And it's a worry. It's not just crowds for games where the so-called small teams, even the yeah. big teams, are struggling where traditionally they would fill up the stadium. So, yeah, I don't know. They also, you know, media are very selective in terms of what stories to run. We've been talking about Absolutely. this thing. Absolutely. Um, we've lost jobs in the process of that. Because remember, that, that becomes a bargaining tool that people use. And they think we don't know this, where it's like, oh, JJ is, a, is that newsroom. And you guys, you want us to give you rights for pigeon racing. Yeah, but JJ likes to criticize pigeon yeah, racing. Get rid of him. So we'll get rid of him, then yeah. you bring pigeon racing yeah. in. And, so and, we've been and, victims and of that. Under no illusion that that may just still be coming in the future. Yeah, but don't worry, you and pigeons don't meet, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> but listen, so in, just in terms of uh, the, the corporate support for, yeah. for our different sports, is it an exaggeration to say there is a, there's almost an apartheid skew? And I want to put it as blunt as yeah. I can, in terms of the kind of sports that are supported by corporates in, 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 yeah. in huge tons, and, and, and as opposed to maybe rugby and crickets and so on. Is yeah. there still that that needs to be resolved in this industry? Francois Pinard, captain of the Springboks when mm -hmm. they won in 95, did it upon himself to go to different colleges yeah. in America to see how that model works. Yeah. And he came back and that was the dawn of something we all call varsity sport. So mm. varsity rugby, varsity football, varsity hockey, varsity netball, yeah. all of those varsity things. You understand that they have a lot of sponsors. Yes. So varsity rugby or whatever, the pizza company, Steers, F&B, you name them, they sponsor we'll that. Throw money in there, yes. But you can't blame him in terms of trying to do that because varsity sport is open to everybody. Yeah. It's a, it's a multiracial, it's not something that is segregated. Yeah. I, you know, I might have individual problems with something like a, a, a Craven Week, mm. still being named Craven Week when I know the history of Danny Craven mm. and what he said about a Springbok jersey sure. and it not being worn by a black person. So people mustn't spike up their emotions when we're dealing with Mabimpi's situation or that one situation. Have that same emotion day to day when you want to find out how many black South African referees are refereeing rugby. Sure. Um, you also want to find out again the open transparency. We've had to fight in terms of rugby to get transformation going. And then you look at a Mabimbi who scored 11 tries in 11 games. Sure. And you look at a Chelsea and Colby who's done ever so well. And I can go on and on. Uh, Herschel Janchis has also become a force on his own. We won the championship because of him. But had they just given an opportunity for the Nzimandes, the Mguenas to play Absolutely. without yes, restrictions, in that league. what would be the problem one day when 15 of those black players march out wearing colors like the top that I'm wearing? Would that be a problem? We're going to have to for South Africans as a whole. Brilliant, brilliant note. Robert, keep up the good work. You are an inspiration, and we wish you well in all of your doing. And take care of yourself, man. Thank you so much, man. I'll drink some of your blessed water. Thanks, man. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break. Robert Marawa. Mm. Mm. <laughs>